Isia Kamusa sells grains at the Kotako market in Nigeria, city of Jos. He says the price of commodities such as rice, which they partly get from Niger, has gone up because there is limited supply. People are not really buying rice because there is a surge in the price. It's affecting my sales because it's when customers buy that I make a profit. Since the announcement of the border closure in July, several cargo trucks carrying goods to Nigeria from Niger, Chad and Mali have been stuck at various border points in the country's northern region. Traders say they are losing about $17 million weekly. The border closure and the sanctions were hasty. It was a decision that was taken in a haste. What I mean by that is like putting the, the cart before the horse. First was supposed to have been discussions, diplomatic negotiations. You know, so I now say, look, um, if you don't do this as a military government, we will do this. But you have not asked for anything and then you have act, uh, given out sanctions. According to the International Trade Center, trade volumes between Nigeria and Niger totaled $226.34 million last year. Apart from imposing trade sanctions, Nigeria has also cut electricity supply to Niger. Some donor agencies have also ceased giving aid to the country. Despite all that, the junta remains defiant. ECOWAS says it's trying to give diplomacy a chance to resolve the crisis and it will only activate its standby military force as a last resort if the junta refuses to reinstate the ousted government. Niger's military junta says it will only hand over power to a democratic government in three years. But Nigeria's president, Bola Tinubu, who chairs ECOWAS, says that proposal is unacceptable. Some public affairs analysts have warned that any military intervention in Niger would result in casualties, and they are calling for dialogue to end the crisis. It's going to be more of a damage control. A damage has been done. The coup is a damage. The sanctions is also considered, you know, uh, a damage. The coupies must be ready to shift ground and ECOWAS too should be prepared to shift ground. The military junta says it's open to talks, but it has cautioned that it won't give in to any measures that would jeopardize the country's sovereignty. ECOWAS maintains that it's also committed to the peace and welfare of Niger's citizens. Even as the standoff over the coup persists, traders in Nigeria say they want to see the crisis quickly resolved so that normal trade can resume between Niger and its neighbors. Tashim Akendi. CGTN Jobs.